how I got involved with graffiti was my uncles were graffiti artists, the, his friends in the neighborhood graffiti artists. I had their access to their black books, their drawing books, and their markers, and I learned about the different you know, pigment, pigments of markers and stuff like that, which bled through the paper and the types of spray cans. And I learned putting magnets underneath the bottom of the cans so when they, the metal ball wouldn't rattle around when they went through the train tunnels so they wouldn't get caught. Uh, I learned all the, the mischievous part of graffiti at a very young age. So my first reaction when I heard about the show in the World Trade Center, I thought it was amazing because what kind of artists would expect to be in such a building? Normally it's reserved for serious businesses and not necessarily a uh, state of the art art project. Um, I wanted to do something for my father. My father got hurt on 9-11 here and lost one of his partners, very close you know, family friend of ours. And uh, my father was also one of the investigators of the first uh, World Trade Center incident. And I was down here searching for my father during 9-11 until we found him. And you know when I had asked him, where, where do you want to go next? He, he said the safest place is the Bronx. So we went back up to the Bronx uh, where he had extensive surgery on his knees and his eye. And um, I wanted to do something right away as soon as it was even I was approached by it. And I knew I wanted to do some sort of tribute uh, to like America as a whole. So which is why I did the, the flag. The Trade Center affected my work in a way that I needed to fully represent what I was going for instead of just making people think it was a cool thing, you know, because you can find cool, cool images, cool stories anywhere. Over here, I wanted to represent New York, but not in a cliche way. I made sure not to go in the 9 11 direction because. You know, everyone does, not everyone does it, but it's, it's a common theme, but if you're trying to represent New York, you have to say what's good about New York, not just we will recover, but we are New York still and always will be. So I was just turning, just turned 21 when the World Trade Center incident happened, 9-11. I was just turning 21. It was about 10 days after my 21st birthday. Uh, and, you know, my father was, having breakfast with my mom and our house up in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. And I, w I was listening to Howard Stern and they said a helicopter crashed into the building and it wasn't a helicopter and I was watching on the news and I called my dad and he was already on his way down here with his unit from the bomb squad, he's an NYPD bomb squad member. And uh, so I just kind of watched it all unfold on TV from 42nd Street from an apartment building. And uh, when the buildings came down, we couldn't, couldn't con connect with my dad and Eventually, I was able to later that night. I think it led, I think, you know, the whole 9-11 situation led to us being here in the first place. Um, but it's my responsibility to represent where I'm from and why I'm here. And that's why I had to paint it like that instead of just remembering. But just, you know, remember why we're here, not just how we got here. For me, 9-11, I was in high school, uh, I think a sophomore in class. We heard it, we, we heard what was going down. Not, you know, not that there was an attack, but that something went down and a plane flew into a building. And then we got the second announcement that another plane flew into a building. And you know there's no, mistakes don't happen twice like that in one day. So we, uh, we left school and you saw this. I mean, I'm in Queens all the way to the other end and you saw it and you smelt it. Like you, you can see that it was just unlike any other day ever and it was shocking. Yeah, I, it's, it's like it just, it changed everything. The whole atmosphere, everyone was different afterwards. But I mean, the fact that you could smell it like that means I was like smelling the building, smelling people, like that's crazy. That's how much of an impact it had. So, I mean, it was very, very life changing for everybody. Um, well, I first I asked my, the, the girl who I collaborated with on this, this girl Jenna Kripel. I knew I wanted to work with her. 
Uh, I knew our style would kind of meld together really well. When I came here, I saw this space and I didn't want myself just to do a mural. I wanted my, my friends to do murals. So that's why I asked Zimmer and I asked Wisby and Gumshoe and Tom Pattinson from England and my buddy Bradley and our other friend Jenna to come in so we can create this space that I'm standing in now. So it just wasn't us, me, and myself. I thought about all my friends. Uh, it, growing up on the streets, I did not get into trouble for graffiti. Um, it, it's kind of the opposite. It gave me something to do. Gra graffiti can be very destructive. I'm not going to say that it doesn't ruin people's buildings and stuff. It's just how you use it, just like anything else. I, I, I like to equate it to like, skateboarding because skateboarding is constructive, it's athletic, it gives you something to practice and you know, gives you structure. You can't just, you, you need to learn, you need to know the basics and move your way up from there. Graffiti will do the same thing for you, but like skateboarding, skateboards can ruin property, ruin benches, like mess up marble that's always been there. So it's, it just depends on how you use it. And me and my friends, we used it responsibly for the most part. You know, you can see 360 in this, on this floor, on this space. You can see all of New York, Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens. You can see parts of New Jersey. You can, even on clear days, you can see Pennsylvania. My biggest influence comes from New York City. The people in it, you know, from growing up in the 80s and the 90s and seeing the, the different years of art and how it grew up and the reflection of the buildings and everything else. So most of my stuff has all of that in it. I'm comfortable in a corporate environment as long as I'm not in the corporate environment. Um, you know, I'm able to dress how I am and move around in this place because they know I'm not one of them, but not in a bad way, we're just different. I think they can see the way I respond to them. Um, the ideas I have and the way I talk is important to them because I'm bringing something to the table that they, they don't have. Even if they, they could have it, but they chose a different path. So it's my job to pick up the slack. I'm comfortable in the, corp, uh, the corporate environment because I know how to separate myself from the art world, the street world, and the corporate world. I believe in the corporate world, art and strategic marketing through art has a, has a place. And corporate companies are now using artists to promote their brand, to build strategic marketing plans based around artists. You, got, you have companies like um, Burger King or you have companies like Jägermeister, who I work with very closely, uh, we're very corporate world bringing artists into their world to design a new brand. I'm working on a solo show in London uh, in, for October. I'm working on a new collection for the Guggenheim. I'm working on a new collection for my clients in Miami. And I'm doing design for restaurants. I'm working with hotels. I'm working with uh, clothing companies to design new, new, new products. Yeah, I'm working with the Maddox Gallery in London, in Mayfair. They have two locations, a great crew of guys. Uh, they're, just, they're just really out there hustling art.